everyone. Today's video is I am particularly excited to share with you all. I have the newest collection from Bees Knees Lacquer. It has been a long time since I've gotten to say that here on the channel. So Bees Knees is giving us a sneaky collection for to celebrate their anniversary. So this collection is called the Fourth Wing Collection inspired by the book of the same name. This is an eight piece collection plus we also have some mystery bags. So the fourth wing collection drops on September 15th at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Bees Knees Lacquer website. I do believe this will also be appearing on the Bees Knees Stockist pages. I am not sure yet if all of them are getting it, but I do know a couple of them are. And of course, I'll have everything linked in the description box. So before we get into today's video, I got a couple of things to mention. The first being... If you are new around here, hi, I am Nicole. It is wonderful to meet you and thank you very much for clicking on today's video. Do consider hitting subscribe if you enjoy nail polish and lifestyle related content. I upload new videos every single week on Tuesdays and Saturdays and I also go live every single Sunday. If you are in fact a returning subscriber, welcome back. How are you doing? Just how is everyone's September going? The products featured in today's video were sent to me by Bees Knees Lacquer for the purpose of swatching and reviewing. This video is also sponsored. As always, all thoughts and opinions are my own, and thank you very much to Bees Knees Lacquer for sponsoring today's video. So the fourth wing collection is an eight-piece collection. We also have some mystery bags. I will be saving the mystery polish swatches until the end of the video, just in case people don't want to be spoiled. Don't worry, I'll give plenty of heads up when the mystery swatching will start. So don't worry, you're not gonna get spoiled if you don't want to get spoiled. It's a lot of information, so I'm gonna save all of the sale deets for the end of the video. Because I know y'all just want to see some dance swatches and you don't want to listen to me talk. So as always, down in the description box, I will have links to where you can purchase these polishes, links to the Bees Knees Lacquer social media pages, my social media pages, as well as a link to my blog post on nicolosnails.com where I host all of my swatch photos, as well as provide a written review. And of course, timestamps are down in the description box as well. Let's just get into this video. First up, we have a dragon without a rider is a tragedy. It's described as being an olive green base with cyan to purple to pink to green multi-chrome pigment. It is priced at $14. A dragon without a rider had a fantastic formula. As you're seeing here, this one does start off and stays fairly sheer. So definitely build this one up to get the most opacity. I absolutely love this olive green base. It is leaning very much towards the Prugly side. The shimmer in here was very difficult for me to photograph. The shimmer in here is exactly as described. It is super duper color shifty. I do want to make note, if your lighting is very bright, which is what you're seeing here from my Flans watches, I found that bright lighting kind of washes out the shimmer. It makes it look very muted. It honestly drove me crazy because even though I dimmed down my lights to like 10%, it still was looking very muted. So I brought the polish outside and you can see here in natural lighting that when under the shade, you can see the shimmer true to color, but out in like direct sunlight where it's a lot brighter, the shimmer looks very washed out. So yeah, I came to the conclusion that bright lighting washes the shimmer out for whatever reason. And even though like I dim my lights down all the way down to 10%, it still was too bright and was washing out the shimmer. So unfortunately my photos do show the shimmer being very washed out, but that's why I brought it outside so y'all can see what the color actually was. I, I'm sorry, I, I just, I don't know what else I could do for this. I swatched this one in three coats plus glossy top coat. You will definitely have some visible nailing with this one in brighter lighting, which is what you're seeing right here. And of course, because this is a sheer polish, you can definitely use it as a topper over whatever color makes your heart happiest. Removal will be very easy and I had no issues with staining. And now we have Don't Borrow Tomorrow's Trouble. It is described as being a deep red base with blue to purple to pink multi-chrome shimmer. This is going to be one of those base colors that looks drastically different from the official description. If you had asked me what the color of this base was, I would have said it was like a berry leaning magenta and not necessarily a red, but I am assuming because the shimmer has like a blue to purple kind of color shiftiness going on that it changes the way the red base looks on the nail. This polish seems to have a little bit more opacity than the last one. I wouldn't say it's 100% opaque in two to three coats. When you get into brighter lighting, you can definitely see some visible nail line, which is what you're seeing here. I'm next to my window. Coverage is pretty decent outside of brighter lighting. I found in most lighting around my home, it did seem to be opaque. Brand does warn that this polish is a potential stainer and I'm not surprised at all because it seems fairly pigmented. 
I did not personally experience any staining, but I did also wear two coats of base coat for my swatches. My photos show Don't Borrow Tomorrow's Trouble in three coats plus glossy top coat and super easy removal. Next up, we have Lies Are Comforting, which is described as being a vibrant red base with a large particle red to green shifting shimmer. The brand also warns that this one is a potential stainer. Lies Are Comforting had a fantastic formula, just like pretty much everything in this release. On that first coat, it's a little bit sheer, a little bit uneven, so you will want to build it up in two to three coats depending on personal preference. For my full hand swatches, I did opt to swatch this one in three coats. However, if you don't mind more obvious visible nail line, it's definitely passable in two coats. The shimmer is strong. The shimmer is absolutely beautiful. I was seeing a red to gold color shift in person. I was not able to see the green at all on my nails. I could see a little bit of it in the bottle, but on my nails, I was not seeing any green to the color shift, but I don't care. It was so pretty. As I mentioned earlier, the brand does warn that this is a potential stainer. I did not personally experience any staining with it. However, again, I wore two coats of top coat just to make sure that I didn't get any staining. That is three coats of Lies Are Comforting, and again, very easy but messy removal. And now we have Strength of Courage, which is described as being a sheer blurple base with a strong gold to green shifting shimmer. Strength of Courage had a fantastic formula. As you can see here, this one is a sheer, so you really need to build it up to get the most opacity. But even in three coats, you will still have very obvious visible nail line. And if you have any kind of like dings or bruises on your nails, like I clearly do, you will be able to see them after three coats. The shimmer in this polish is absolutely stunning. I feel like it was just the other day on live, I was talking smack about how over I am, blue and blurple and purple bases with gold to green shimmer. I'm sorry, I take it back. I forgot how pretty they are, I take it back. This was so damn beautiful. The shimmer in here also seems to have like an orange to gold to green color shift. Person, nothing about this polish really screams blurple to me, like it doesn't seem to have any like blurple or purple in here. To my eye, I would say this one looks more like a cornflower blue than, you know, anything close to being a blurple or a purple. So that is three coats of Strength of Courage. Super easy removal, a little bit messy due to the shimmer, and I had no issues with staining. And now we have to teach us about our past, which is described as being a milk chocolate base with a large particle green to blue shimmer. I knew as soon as I saw the bottle for this polish that I was going to absolutely be in love. And I was right. I absolutely love this one. Because this polish is so sheer, I did find that even in three coats when you build this one up, the chocolate base looks more like a burnt orange on the nail than like a true what I think of when I think of a chocolate brown. I like burnt orange, so I'm not mad at that at all. And I also really feel like Bees Knees does not do a lot of browns, let alone oranges. So I'm really happy to see this one pop up into this release. The shimmer is such a drastically different color than the base that I feel like the shimmer looks like extra strong and extra shimmery because it really pops very well. As I mentioned, this is a fairly sheer polish. so You can really see quite a lot of your nail line as well as any kind of imperfections on the nail. And because this is a large particle shimmer, the shimmer will definitely stick to your skin and nails upon removal, but removal won't be difficult. Just, you know, very messy. And now we have The Right Way Isn't The Only Way, which is described as being a deep violet base with emerald to blue to purple to pink multi-chrome shimmer. And the brand does warn that this polish may stain. The Right Way Isn't The Only Way had a fantastic formula. I feel like this is one of the polishes in the release that seems vaguely familiar to me. I did a quick scroll through my Bees Knees swatch archive and I wasn't seeing anything that was exactly the same as this, but I feel like I have seen this one before. Other than having some deja vu regarding this one, I do still think it's very beautiful. The base does start off a little bit sheer and a little bit uneven, but I will call this one a two to three color depending on personal preference. Like many of the other shimmers in this release, when you get this one to bright direct lighting like the sunlight, which is what you were seeing here, we'll be able to see a little bit through the base. I found in bright lighting such as that, the base does look a little bit uneven, but since the shimmer is largely what gives you the most opacity in this one, it's not terribly surprising. My photo show the right way isn't the only way in three coats plus a glossy top coat. I did not personally experience any staining, but I also wore two coats of base coat. And now we have Truth is Painful. This one is described as being a sheer cornflower blue base full of a red to orange to green Aurora shimmer. The shimmer in this polish was particularly stunning. 
formula and application were both fantastic. This is another one that is going to be very sheer even when built up in three coats, which is what my swatches show it as. This one is super color shifty as well as super sparkly. While the brand doesn't say this is like a large particle shimmer, to my eye, it does look like a large particle shimmer. So you get a lot of sparkly goodness, but no texture as if it was like a glitter. You know, I said earlier that strength of courage looked like a cornflower blue to me. I just wanted to show a side by side of the two together so you can see how similar the base colors are, but they're not similar polishes. Like the shimmer is definitely different between the two, despite both being like a really pretty blue base. And if you are a fiend for color shifty goodness who also likes cornflower blues, I would actually recommend this one over strength of courage if you want that pretty cornflower blue base, but also have like real color shifty in your shimmer. So that is Truth is Painful in three coats plus glossy. Top coat removal will be very easy and I had no issues with staining. And the final polish in the main collection is called You're Making Us Look Bad. This one is described as being a cobalt blue base with a blue to purple shimmer. You're Making Us Look Bad also had a fantastic formula. You're gonna want two to three coats on this one. My full hand swatches show this one in three coats plus glossy top coat. I did not personally experience any staining with this one, but this is another polish that I did opt to wear a second coat of base coat to prevent from any staining. This is another polish in the release that like I definitely feel like we have some vaguely similar polishes from Bees Knees. I, again, I did a quick scroll through my Bees Knees swatch archive and it looks like we have a lot of blue bases with a predominantly blue to either purple or to a green color shift. I'm not saying they're all the same, but I am saying that they are very, very similar. And depending on where you are in your nail polish collecting obsession, you may or may not feel it's completely worth it to own multiple cobalt blues with a predominantly blue shimmer that shifts either to a purple or a green. I'm not the one to decide that for you. That is between you and your wallet. So that is three coats of your Making Us Look Bad plus glossy top coat. I did not personally experience any staining with this one, but I would definitely recommend doubling up on base coat just in case. Alrighty, so final thoughts. As someone who has never read this book called Fourth Wing, I did not understand any of the references in the polishes names. I would love to know if anyone has read this book. What do y'all think of it? Like, what do you think of the polishes? Does it fit the book at all? I'd love to know what people think. As far as the collection as a whole, I think these are all really pretty polishes. I was a little bit disappointed that it was just strictly a shimmer release. I was really, really hoping for like a variety of finishes within this release. And I know I was talking smack like two weeks ago maybe that I was tired of like gold, green, blue shifting shimmer. I take it back. I apologize to the gold, green, blue, to the aqua, green, blue, all those shimmers. I apologize to the fans of those shimmers. I'm back. I am, a, I am a fan again. I like them again because these were really, really beautiful. So while I do still wish we had more of a variety of finishes, if you're watching this video, there is a high probability that you know if Bees Knees Lacquer is going to knock a formulation out the park, it's probably going to be a shimmer polish. So these were all fantastic. I had no issues with the formulations at all. Editing Nicole is going to pop in in a moment here to let us know what my favorites were as I've got three polishes left to swatch, but I wanted to record my intros and outros today. So Editing Nicole, take it away. Thanks, Nicole, from the past. <laughs> Alrighty, as far as my favorites from this release, I am going to go with to teach us about our past. I really, really liked the base, even though I do with who Stormy's here. Hold on, it's not a video without Stormy girl. Stormy just got here. My top pick from this release is going to be to teach us about our past. Even though I wish that that one was a little bit more brown and less orange, which I feel like this is the second time in the past month I've said that about a polish, I did still really like it a lot and I can't really think of another Bees Knees polish that I have that has a similar base color paired with that shimmer, which I definitely appreciate. And then my second favorite is going to be a dragon without a rider. Can you sit here so they can see you? Stormy, don't hurt me! Jesus. And then a dragon without a rider is going to be my second top pick, even though I absolutely hated photographing that one. I just could not figure out why, no matter how dim I made my lights, that like the shimmer just was not showing up how it was supposed to. And I think Truth is Painful will be likely my honorable mention from the release because I really, really loved how the shimmer paired with the base color on that one. Ah, uh, so yeah. Those are my top picks. Let's get back to the video. All right, thanks, Editing Nicole. So as far as pricing and availability goes for this release, each polish is gonna be priced at $14 for a 15 ml bottle. There will not be a full collection listing for this release due to the fact 
that these polishes are slightly limited. And when I say they are slightly limited, I mean that there's currently a cap of 1,000 bottles per person. <laughs> Don't freak out. Don't freak out. You are okay. Don't freak out. However, if any of the polishes do sell out, Bees Needs will put up a pre-order listing so folks will be able to pick up the polishes on a pre-order basis. For the first three days of sale, customers will only be able to purchase one bottle of each polish per order as well as one mystery bag. After the 18th, folks will be allowed to purchase multiples of each polish and also mystery bags. In the case of the mystery bags, mystery bags currently have a cap on them of 1,250 bags total. If you go back and purchase multiple mystery bags, Bees Knees cannot guarantee that you won't receive any duplicates, so be aware of that. For anything that sells out and requires a pre-order period, Period, those will not ship for three to four weeks after the sale period is over. Bees Knees Lacquer also has a new logo in case you have missed it. So over here are the old logos. Um, if you've been purchasing the past few months, Bees Knees has been using like a sticker for the bottles. No more. We are back to screen printing. The new logo is over here. I know that new logo has a lot of fans kind of divided. In my personal opinion, I like the old B logo more, but I like this new clean logo more than I like the sticker. So I'm not complaining. I think it's a cute, clean look, so you know, cool beans. So I would love to know what everyone thought of the main part of the collection. Are you planning on picking up? Y'all know the drill, let me know. As far as the mystery bags go, these are all inspired by Resident Evil 4, specifically the character named Leon Kennedy. Apparently he's got some real weird one-liners. So that is the inspiration behind the mystery bags. For the mysteries, these are all shimmer finishes, just like the main part of the collection. If you would like a list of the description of all of the potential mystery polishes. I do have those over on my blog post for the mystery bags because I didn't want anyone who wanted to read about the main part of the collection being spoiled. I did opt to do a separate blog post showing my swatches of the two polishes that I received for the mystery bags as well as listing off all of the description for the potential mysteries. There are a total of 12 mystery polishes and some of them are Dumacorn siblings. These mystery polishes go on sale at the same time as the main part of the collection. Again, these do have caps on them. So let's get into the swatches. This is your final warning that these spoilers for the mystery polishes are about to start. Do not want to be spoiled for the mysteries. I suggest leaving the video. Okay, we're gonna start swatching now this was your last warning first polish is called my lucky day and the brand describes it as a deep red base with an emerald green to blue to purple to pink multi-chrome shimmer and the brand does warn that this one might stain. My Lucky Day had a fantastic formula, similar to the polishes in the main part of the release. I did find on that first coat, this one is very sheer, very uneven. Do need to build it up both to gain opacity as well as to even out coverage. To that same depth of color that you see in the bottle, I would recommend wearing this one in three coats or maybe going in for significantly thicker coats than I did. During editing, I did keep confusing this one with Don't Borrow Tomorrow's Trouble from the main part of the the collections. I just want to show the two side by side here. They're not really all that similar. I really don't know why I kept confusing the two. The base colors are a little bit different and then the shimmer is also different between the two. When I was putting my footage together, I kept confusing the two. So maybe someone else thinks they're going to be similar. I did not personally experience any staining with this one, but I also did wear two coats of base coat just in case. That is three coats of my lucky day. Super easy removal, but a little bit messy from the shimmer. And the second polish I have from the mystery bags is called I Was Almost a Pancake. The brand describes this one as a great purple base with a gold to red multi-chrome shimmer. I Was Almost a Pancake had a nice formula. It goes on a little bit patchy on that first coat, but if you aren't super picky, it's definitely passable in two coats. I found the patchiness in two coats was a bit too much for me to handle. So my full hand swatches do swatch this one in three coats plus glossy top coat. I never would have called this one a great purple base. It looks very red tone, which I'm assuming is due to the shimmer. Really hope what I'm about to say makes sense to somebody besides me. But the shade of red that this one looks like it is reminds me of this like red grape flavored Dimatep cough medicine from when I was a kid. Hopefully somebody understands what I'm trying to say because I tried to explain this to my husband. He had no idea idea what I was talking about. Nothing in here is going to dry down textured. Removal will be very easy and I had no issues with staining. 
Alrighty, so those were the mysteries. Out of the two that I received, I think I was almost a pancake is going to be my favorite one of the two that I received. I feel a little conflicted saying which was my favorite since, you know, it is kind of a crapshoot on which one of these you get if you pick them up, but I like that one a lot. I thought it was pretty. I already did all the sale information, so if you made it this far into the video, thank you all very much for watching today's video. I will throw in some bonus footage since you made it to the end. I would love to know what you all are planning on picking up from this release. If you're planning on picking it, how do you feel about Bees Knees Lacquer having a new collection? Personally, I'm not mad at it. I'm really happy that Sarah was able to release a collection for the brand's anniversary and just in case you were wondering if we were gonna have another collection for next month. <laughs> no. We will not be having another collection for next month. So yeah, before we end today's video, I want to give a very special shout out to my channel members. Bessie, just thank y'all so much. You guys are absolutely amazing. Your names are all on the screen right now. If you'd like to sign up for my channel memberships, I have a link for that down in the description box. But as always, please don't feel pressured to sign up for the memberships. Just, you know, like the video, comment, share, subscribe, all the things, and we are good. So thank you all so very much again for watching today's video. I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. Happy shopping next week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>